This is a second video that I am making concerning the use of the oxygen treatment hood as an alternative interface in the delivery of non-invasive ventilation and CPAP. This video has been made to supplement the information presented in video one. My name is Tom Fox. I've worked in the field of hyperbaric oxygen therapy for over 30 years. The purpose of this video is to acquaint you with the oxygen treatment hood and the minimal modifications that are needed to put it into service in non-invasive ventilation. This is my disclaimer. The information presented here is to be taken as suggested guidance only. This oxygen treatment hood has been in use in respiratory care in the international community for 20 years. The oxygen treatment hood available in Europe is designed to deliver non-invasive ventilation at a high rate of flow, resulting in pressure that is slightly above normobaric pressures. It is important to realize that the oxygen hoods available in North America were originally intended for use in the hyperbaric environment and must be modified slightly to be used in the normobaric respiratory care role. Trials outside the United States and North America have consistently shown oxygen treatment hoods to provide substantial benefits over other interfaces in the delivery of non-invasive ventilation. The oxygen hoods available in North America are primarily made by two companies, Amron International and Seelong Medical Systems. The 510Ks designate these devices for use in hyperbaric oxygen chambers. With minor modifications, these devices can easily be adapted as an interface for non-invasive ventilation and CPAP in the COVID-19 patient. As an interface, the oxygen treatment hood assembly conveys certain benefits to both the patient and the healthcare provider in the treatment of the COVID-19 patient. Chief among the advantages is the capability to provide early intervention with oxygen outside the ICU with individualized isolation to address hypoxemia. The disadvantages of using the oxygen treatment hood tend to be minor and are easily corrected if you know to anticipate the requirements. Once therapy with the oxygen hood is implemented, the healthcare team will be required to closely monitor patients. Most will declare themselves to as a success or failure within the first hour. Hypoxemia and the effort of breathing should be evaluated as indicators for success or failure. The Amron and Seelong hoods, which were designed for hyperbaric use, share many of the same features. There are different models of oxygen treatment hoods within the same manufacturer. Each will require distinct minor modifications. The neck seals of each model are cut to the neck size of the patient. The hood displayed in this picture is the newest model of the Amron treatment hood. The neck ring provides a base for the individual neck seal. It has an O-ring that is lightly lubricated to ensure the seal of the hood. Care should be taken not to over lubricate this item. Over lubrication contributes to the final hood dislodgement once higher pressures are applied. 
the double groove design of the newest models of the neck ring and the changes in the design of the neck seal give it the capability to maintain its integrity with exposure to higher flow rates in this use. Here you see the, diff the difference in designs of the neck rings side by side. Each has a distinct modification that must be made in order to be used in the non-invasive ventilated role. The clip pictured is to ensure the integrity of the new designs of the oxygen treatment hood once high flow rates are applied. Three clips are installed 120 degrees apart over the frame of the clear vinyl hood. These clips work on newer versions of the Amron and C-Long hoods. These clips ensure that the components of the oxygen hood assembly don't become dislodged under high flow rates. The newest design of the clear vinyl hood places the frame to the exterior of the vinyl hood, allowing the clip to remain in place when the hood assembly is inflated. This is the newest model of the Ox Amron oxygen hood assembly fully assembled. The older neck ring is modified differently to ensure the integrity when fully inflated. The neck seal is taped in position into the groove of the older neck ring. The neck ring is taped to the frame of the older model of the vinyl hood. The frame of the older model, uh, older model or older version of the Amron vinyl hood is inside the vinyl hood. Clips designed for the newer hood assemblies will not work on the older version of the hood as they become dis dislodged easily when the hood is inflated. This is a close-up view of the two parts of the hood assembled, secured together. In this picture, you will see a close-up view of the older hood frame mounted on the interior of the older vinyl hood. Clips are ejected easily as the hood inflates. This is the complete oxygen hood assembly of the older model Amron hood. The inspiratory tube assembly and the expiratory tube assembly attach to the 22 millimeter connectors on the bottom of the neck ring. A rubber stopper is positioned between the two 22 millimeter connectors. The rubber stopper can be separated to allow a NG tube or straw for hydration or nutritional support. This is the assembled neck ring with the straw in place. The versatility and adaptability of this interface makes it a valuable asset to the respiratory therapist. These are two configurations of the oxygen treatment hood assembly for use with wall oxygen or as an interface with a mechanical ventilator and BiPAP. Following examples are of exhaust side components or the expiratory gas tubing needed to be assembled.
the oxygen hood assembly as it functions in the hyperbaric environment uses the differential pressure between the interior of the chamber, higher pressure, and the exterior of the chamber, lower pressure, through a regulator to provide evacuation of exhausted gases from the hood assembly. The circuit pictured provides an attachment for a line to provide a slight vacuum to evacuate exhausted gases so it can be used at lower pressures. This is, the assemble, this is the assembled exhaust gas circuit to be used as an interface for CPAP. It is ready to be connected to the bottom of the neck ring. The supply side components are selected to allow titrated high volume flow capable of being adjusted to the fraction of inspired oxygen desired. The flow rate of the oxygen treatment hood assembly is in its normal use in the hyperbaric environment is between 35 and 50 liters. This assembly was developed to simplify the supply side assembly described in our first video. It connects three separate lines using two connectors to wall oxygen. This is a supply side assembly with attachment of three lines to wall gases. Two of the lines are to be used with oxygen, one for medical air. The completed assembly is ready for attachment to the bottom of the neck ring. This is a picture of another option of com the completed supply side assembly made from connectors available in the respiratory department of most hospitals. Variations of this setup may have to be made due to the availability of connectors. Pictured are the supply side assembly with three in, with the three in one connector and the exhaust side assembly set up for CPAP. This is the alternative setup of the supply side assembly set up for CPAP. Here you see the oxygen treatment hood neck ring with both assemblies attached in a CPAP configuration. High flow rates are recommended to ensure carbon dioxide is not rebreathed. Adjust gas flow to ensure moisture does not accumulate on the interior of the oxygen hood. Visible, oyster, uh, visible moisture on the inside of the hood is seen prior to carbon dioxide becoming an issue. Recommended flow rates in Europe for the non-invasive ventilation mode are above 40 liters per minute. The University of Chicago recommends a flow rate of between 100 and 150 in the CPAP mode to ensure CO2 washout. I hope you have found the information provided in this video to be helpful. Thank you for your attention.